This is my parents' new house. It's got an acre parcel. Home Depot, success. We've got our board, we got our two by fours up top. We are ready. So I brought all of my slingshot gear with me in my little tub. You can get different band thicknesses, you can get different ammo type. What's the best way to com combine each one to get the most power and accuracy? I thought I'd do a little experiment. So where does that leave us? Uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> really. Uh, this is more of an experiment for myself to maybe help you answer some questions that you've had. Oh, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna see the video on this. <laughs> Now, if you're like me and have done any slingshot shooting in your life or purchased any slingshot equipment, you're probably aware that you can get different band thicknesses, you can get different ammo type. And if you're like me, you've probably often wondered like, what's the benefit of each one? How does each one work? What's the best way to com combine each one to get the most power and accuracy? So I thought I'd do a little experiment. Uh, let, me, let me tell you exactly how it's gonna work. My whole goal with this experiment was just to determine how much effect the band materials gauge had on the performance of the slingshot. So I actually bought all the major slingshot thicknesses from 0.8 gauge all the way down to 0.4 millimeter. I bought three different ammo sizes, half inch, 7 16 and 3 8 Now I have been shooting with my, uh, my Simple Shot and Fowler Sparrow edition. It's a beautiful slingshot, probably my favorite slingshot. But recently I picked up the Axiom X, which is a aluminum slingshot and has clips. So I figure I've already gone through and cut out all the bands for these. I'm going to go ahead and be able to swap out the bands very quickly and very easily using this slingshot right here so it's nice and repeatable because I don't want to have anything thrown off. I would be emulating one of my favorite TV shows growing up for this experiment, The Mythbusters. I would be shooting each band set from the same distance five times per ammo type, that way it could average out the results. From this, I could determine just how fast each piece of ammo flew using some simple mathematics. What I'm also gonna be doing is filming a lot of this with the GoPro, which is capable of slow motion. What I'm hoping to see is at a specific frame rate, what combinations of band sets to ammo using the GoPro to watch each piece of ammunition heading towards the target, uh, wh at which one performs the best with, which, uh, with each band set. Now I know there's always human error involved because I'll be shooting it and I'm not the best. Uh, there will always be that to, to consider, but I figure this is not necessarily an experiment in accuracy on my end. It's more of an experiment on the different band set to combination with ammo to see which one performs best. There's gonna be some objective things we figure out and also some subjective ones like, you know, how does it feel? While I'd love for this experiment to happen in the great outdoors where the slingshot belongs and I feel most at home, um, just because I have a lot of stuff to move around and I don't wanna get thrown off, uh, we're gonna switch over to a studio space to keep this as objective as possible and scientific too, so let's switch over. Before I could officially start my experiment, I knew I needed a better ammo catch. By changing ammo size and band thickness at least like 15 times, my aim would be way off. And I wasn't ready to go chasing ball bearings all over the place. The, the little travel catch box that I use, uh, it just wasn't gonna cut it this time. So I tinkered for a while with some ideas and sketched out some plans and made my way over to Home Depot for some materials. $108 later, and I was ready to start building. This was one expensive catch box.
made it to my parents' brand new house. Okay, I'm gonna quickly go through and explain how the catch box works. So I've got these rods here, they're gonna be a curtain rod. Uh, eventually I'm gonna get some just old sheets at a thrift store, hang two layers. We got two holes here, two holes here. I'm gonna tie a string, single string to hang my targets. I also have a shelf here that I put on to you know, lay out cans. It's uh, about three feet wide, two feet deep. You can fit quite a few targets. Well, it's just a perfect day to be out and about. Um, you can see it's a very gray, kind of rainy day. I just love it. Um, and, and we're here at uh, my studio space. In reality, this is my parents' new house. Um, and it's got an acre parcel, lots of outbuildings, a horrible, nasty, gross swimming pool and I'm allowed to basically do whatever I feel like here. Uh, the only downside, the main downside, is that back, way back there, hopefully you can see that, that's the big wall. That sound is uh, the traffic, so uh, we will have to sometimes deal with some car noise, but what an opportunity to mess around and build some cool stuff for the channel, so yeah. All right, what I have most recently built can see it sitting there behind me is a target catch box I do have a couple modifications I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up on this and then we'll be able to shoot and test out our band tuning okay got my slingshot stuff there um, we'll talk about the van later in some other episode or series or video. Uh, I don't want to talk about it right now. We'll talk about slingshots. Okay, so we got my slingshot stuff. Uh, what I recently purchased at the thrift store. I bought a whole bunch of these like long pillowcases. I figure I can just kind of wrap those over, tie them down, and uh, that'll be a little bit of a softer backsplash for the ammo. What's happening is uh, the tarp thingy that I built for it, it's, um, or the one that I'm using temporarily, is just too thick. So ammo is hitting it and bouncing off a little bit like a spring. Hoping this will do it uh, much better instead. I'm not sure if this is going to fit my belt. Uh, the first thing I want to do before we get too far into it is actually make sure that those sheets are going to stop ammo. Or if I have to put some weights in the, in the bags, you know, because they're, they're uh, pillowcases. Still rocking the Popo leather belt after who knows how many years. I'll put it at the bottom of the screen. I basically rotate between this belt and my Grip 6 belt. Both are phenomenal. <laughs> yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, take some shots at 30 feet. Now, I know normally it's 10 meters or 33 feet or whatever the number is. Um, but we're doing it at 30 feet just for easier math. I don't feel like dealing with odd numbers, even though you know, 30 is not actually the easiest number. But yeah, so what we're going to do, we're going to shoot down the line. I got 7 16th ammo on some thermobands, therabands, thermobands, gold standard. And uh, yeah, we'll just take a couple shots, make sure that things are working properly. Airplanes make sure things are working properly 
uh, before we go ahead and start shooting random bands on, with random ammo and uh, doing who knows what kind of damage. So I got my little mark. Let's take some shots. Okay, got the Sparrow slingshot. Uh, my warrior pouch is starting to delaminate. So that, that could throw off the shot, who knows. spinner and broke the wire. Okay, so two things have become abundantly clear as I've been doing this. One, my aim's not perfect, so if I'm shooting the same shot at the same target, um, I might wind up actually uh, missing more often than getting bad results and bad numbers. Uh, and the other thing is, as nice as this is working, I might need some kind of backsplash just in case because there's a big big crack in the very center. So far, uh, the ammo catch box works, all the ammo is in there. I did snap the little wire I was using, so that fell, but that's okay. The other thing that I'm realizing is with an inc inconsistent shot, it means I'm going to get inconsistent data, so I need something that will sound, uh, that will be, how do I put this? So what I need as I'm analyzing the video results is I need something that will actually give me a sound cue of when it hits that point. Uh, and I think I've come up with the perfect thing. Instead of using a target, I'm gonna use aluminum foil. It makes an obvious sound. I'm gonna be able to pick it up on the camera. I can tape it to there. It'll be large enough uh, that my aim won't exactly matter and thin enough that the ammo will easily puncture it. So I'm going to line the whole front with aluminum foil and just shoot uh, three to five shots of each ammo type with each band attachment at the aluminum. Ooh, this is turning into a, an ordeal. Uh, and then capture it all in slow-mo, analyze the results, and we will see if band tuning is the reason that my aim is just never consistent. The good news is, this has worked. I'm able to go in, take a look at the frames, judge how long each ammo took to fly across and hit the target using the sound of the aluminum. The bad side is, I have like 20 different video clips with five different shots each to sift through. Um, in order to get all this data. So I'm not gonna be finishing this today, but boy, uh, this is gonna take a while. This might be a, like a multi-part series if I can't get this done, you know, like the build and then the test and results. So yeah, if that's the case, whew, got a lot of work to do. So I've studied the results, I've gone through the data, and I have some interesting conclusions that I was not expecting. Let's just back up for a second and talk about the experiment as a whole. What I'm trying to uncover here is how your band uh, thickness, so the material itself, affects the speed of your shot. People talk about band length, uh, you know, being directly related to the draw length and your comfort level. Um, you know, that 500% elongation factor being kind of the sweet spot of, of your accuracy. But I haven't really looked too much into 
actual band thickness. What I've read is, you know, the thinner the material, the smaller the target, or the smaller the ammo size should be. This just creates kind of a weird bump in my shirt. Uh, the smaller the ammo size should be, really that's, that's kind of subjective. I, I don't know if that's a cut and dry answer. So if you consider the elongation factor of the material, your draw length, um, <clears throat> what type of ammo, your goals as far as if you're shooting for accuracy, longevity, all that needs to be factored in. You know, if you want the most power, do you actually have to choose the thickest stuff or can sm thinner stuff, easier to pull back, more repeatable shots make you just as accurate? So um, going through this experiment, shooting each ammo size uh, ten, no, five times for each uh, band thickness, all cut at about a 10-inch active band length, which is, for my draw length, around a 300% th elongation, uh, which is not ideal. You know, usually it's about 500% for um, hunting, especially if you want the most power, 400% if you want good longevity. Uh, so, uh, but I wanted something that could be repeated and tested. So what we saw is really kind of something very interesting you know, results that I wasn't expecting. Some I was expecting, like for the fact that as the ammo got heavier, the shot got slower. The speed got shot slower in, in feet per second, so that's pretty, pretty logical. Uh, but what I didn't expect is that what we saw is at about the, the 0.4 millimeter band thickness, obviously the slowest, once you hit 0 0.5, 0 0.6, and 0.7, they were roughly the same. There wasn't a huge amount of difference between them, and you can see from the chart right here, this, this line graph that I, come, uh, that I, that I uh, put together, there's not a huge difference. You know, you could almost shoot the same ammo from all three and get the same speed results, and that's kind of an interesting thing that I was not quite expecting. 0.8 millimeter, obviously, big jump in speed from that one. Uh, and again, remember, all these were shot the same. Same draw length, uh, same uh, active band length uh, of about 10 inches. Uh, with my draw, I'm about a 31 inch draw. I anchor under my cheekbone right here, since it's, a, it's an easy, repeatable lock. I can kind of just lock it in right there. Um, so, um, it's interesting to me. So what I've done to kind of extend this experiment a little bit is I've cut 0.6 millimeter and 0.7 millimeter to uh, a 400% elongation and a 500% elongation. I'm going to go ahead and shoot those as well, just to see. I'm very curious to see what kind of results I'll get um, as far as the speed, uh, just objectively what the speed was. I'm going to go ahead and shoot a few more rounds using the two different thicknesses. Uh, or the two different lengths, 400%, 500%, uh, which for me is about a seven and a half, seven and three quarters inch for 400%, and about a six and a quarter, six and a half inch for 500%. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot those and see if there are really some, some marked results. So where does that leave us? You know, what questions does this video actually answer, if any? Uh, I'm not sure, <laughs> really. Uh, this is more of an experiment for myself to understand the process a little bit better to maybe help you answer some questions that you've had bouncing around your head as you've been working on your slingshot shooting. Um, Really, it comes down to experimentation. If you have the opportunity to experiment like I just did, I would recommend it. It's gonna be very helpful to you. It's gonna help you understand what you're doing and what you need. Uh, having access to all this material, though, I figured you know this was a good opportunity for me to kind of test it out for you so you maybe didn't have to. Uh, as far as speed and accuracy goes, if you can get close to that 500% elongation, doesn't matter which band set you choose or which thickness you choose, it's going to help your speed and accuracy. Ultimately though, 
it does come down to the ammo. Uh, if you're going to be shooting 716s like I prefer to, you're gonna wanna shoot something like 0.6 or 0.7, bottom line, you know, maybe up to 0.8. Uh, and that way you can get some good stretch, and good speed and good accuracy and all that good stuff. Because the faster your ammo flies, the straighter it's gonna fly and that's gonna result in a better shot placement. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to, I'd love to hear it in the comments down below. Give me a big thumbs up if you wanna see more of this type of stuff, subscribe. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna be coming back. I'm back. Hoping to be back more regularly every week. <laughs> Fingers crossed, right? Uh, making stuff, playing with stuff, going out and having little outdoor adventures and sharing them with you. Now, life has been chaotic and hectic, but I'll save that for another episode. This one's long enough. Hang on, before you go, I wanna show off my brand new slingshot that I just got. This is the Selgin Cleaver Pro, I think. Selgin Cleaver Pro. This is a crazy designed and uh, crazily engineered slingshot. You can see its shape. Not a lot of people have uh, put any videos up on this one yet at least last time I checked, it's supposed to be shaped in this way to make for an extremely repeatable grip so that you can increase your accuracy. Um, so that, if you're interested, maybe stay tuned for that. Uh, I have not shot it yet. I'm gonna throw some bands on here, take a couple shots as soon as this video's done, but I'm not gonna do it on camera. I'm gonna have to save that for another video. Thanks again, see you guys. Oh boy, this is accurate. What? Oh, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna see the video on this. <laughs> oh yeah.